I'm Phyllis Bowen. I'm a professor emeritus from the University of Illinois at Chicago. My area of research is nutrition, um, especially carotenoids like beta carotene and lycopene and their health effects. I'm also a teacher and a mentor for 35 years. Many graduate students and undergraduates have passed through my courses. Um, the other side of what I do and, and care about is looking at what might be possible if people really understood their profound um, connection to the eternal. Um, I hate to use the word God, but um, just the eternal hum of life uh, and what might be possible out of that kind of realization as far as world peace, um, everybody having the life that they really want to live. And out of that, I've developed a, an interior journey seminar that I've done for seven years um, where we uh, read many, many books uh, um, a year on uh, theologies from different, different religions, different eras in time, different cultures, also psychology, sociology, and science. Okay, that was my introduction. Okay. Um, when I was asked to uh, put together something on a reaction to 9 11, um, I, I tried to get, put myself back into that time 10 years ago, which is kind of hard to do. Um, in what was happening in my head. And what I was surprised is how those memories were there and available for me. Um, I remember very much the tragedy, and my experience of it is on TV, um, trying to put myself in the place of people um, who were experiencing uh, being trapped or falling and out of buildings, or firefighters, or even later, those people who had suddenly lost somebody. I lost a 17-year-old son to suicide, so I know about sudden loss and tragedy. Um, but then, um, as I was listening to the commentators um, talk, um, and as they were trying to make sense of this as a world tragedy or a tragedy of the United States, um, I got to thinking, well, wait a minute. Um, I live in Chicago. This is a very big country. Um, we're all still intact. That is, the country's much larger than New York, even though that was a big tragedy for all of us. And it started me thinking about um, at that time, well, who was it that was so angry at us? Who was it that, that did this to us? And who were the people or what was the surroundings that developed um, this deep anger um, for us? And I got to thinking about the Middle East and our need for oil and uh, whether uh, the Met, uh, and the central role of Israel and Palestine in the conflict and wondering how on earth this played out in our own policy and whether we had anything to do um, and maybe we weren't as blameless as we thought we were. I had always considered that the United States had the best intentions toward other countries. Um, but I know from reading in books that um, a lot of our policies, and not only governmental policies, but policies that come from capitalism um, and the defense of our capitalistic society by our government, have not, um, not served the rest of the world very well. And um, I don't know what to do with that as a private citizen. 
uh, what is my re role and my responsibility um, in uh, policy blunders and mistakes and even really tragedies that I'm a part of because I gave my tax dollars or I, I was silent about things. I started thinking about just war. Um, what, what is a just war? And is there any time to be violent? Um, what, um, during the 9-11, and especially with the Iraq war, um, the justification was deep violence and atrocities um, toward Iraqi people. Um, is that a justification for war? And so it became, I became very confused about what my responsibility was. Um, was I guilty if I was just a bystander and, and, and didn't uh, subscribe to violence? Um, and so I began to question all those kinds of things. My, th that narrative in now is colored by what's happened 10 years later. That is, my memory is, is colored by that, um, the 10 years that have passed. And, in, and that struck me as I was trying to think about this in a very personal way, because my, uh, my oldest son and I are not getting along right now. And, um, and his reality and my reality are really quite different. And I begin to question, uh, in a very deep and existential way, the difference between steadfast values and trying to understand the, the other point of view, even though, those, though that point of view conflicts with my own values. Um, I have always loved reading the Bhagavad Gita. And the Bhagavad Gita is an Indian tale about um, Arjuna, who is the leader of one group, and uh, both groups, both um, countries, are poised on, on the battlefield. And Arjuna and his chariot rider, Krishna, roll out into the middle of the battlefield in a time of pause. Time has stood still. And Arjuna says, I cannot fight these people. They're my brothers and sisters on the other side. This will come to naught. And Krishna says, yes, but you have to fight. And then the Bhagavad Gita um, is a discussion and a dialogue between Arjuna and Krishna. And the essence that of Krishna, Lord Krishna says, is that we should be unattached. That attachment is a difficulty. And yet, to be, um, how do you um, stay unattached and not be an irresponsible bystander. And so uh, it's, it's greatly confusing to me to find a way to be active and engaged um, and uh, have a belief in, in particular values in such a way um, that um, peace and, um, and well-being are, are given and produced in everybody. I also think that um, we have a time now that we're very much more understanding how the brain works. And our brain has misperceptions. It, um, it is subject to immediate fight or flight responses. Um, that um, when you're in flight or fight, uh, the hormones get going and you actually get more stupid. Um, and how that stupidity plays in our immediate reaction um, to an assault so that we defend ourselves in a back reaction of violence or name calling or those kinds of things. Um, and that we, we really need to understand how we can pull back from those immediate reactions um, to something much more um, balanced and uh, uh, our ability to see what the possibilities are that we might not be seeing the whole picture. And then finally, um, another thought has come to me and that's the whole idea of scapegoating. Um, one of the things we do when things are going wrong is we find somebody to blame and our news today is just full of scapegoating. When things go wrong, uh, our news cycle immediately identifies somebody 
Um, and then we can all look at that somebody, uh, whether they've said something um, wrong or um, have done something that we think is terrible. Um, and then if they're punished in some way, then all will be well again. Um, and we really need to pay attention to scapegoating as a way of, um, of conducting our lives. Um, so there, some of the things I was thinking about when I'm thinking about 9-11 and how we might choose an alternate way on this 10th anniversary um, to look at who we are again, tell the truth about our part um, in the whole upset in the world, and apologize um, and forgive.